Hello, everybody, and welcome to our global prayer service, which is held on the first Friday of every month. During this prayer service, we will hear guest reflections, scripture reading, and prayers of the faithful. Each month, we feature a region, and this month we are live from Nairobi, Kenya, Africa. There will be live interpretations available in English, Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, and French. My name is Maryam, and I will be your MC for this service. Thank you for praying with us. Our theme this month is Transforming Peace. We will begin this service with an opening prayer from Collins Lungu, a Laudato Si animator from Zambia. Collins? In our prayer service in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We come before your throne, Lord God. We have gathered here in union with you. We ask you, our God, to send forth your spirit to fall on us like tongues of fire and let us burn with your love. Voices are growing around us and fear takes us like a storm. Anxiety and alienation from our own world. We ask for your eternal peace peace that we make that will make us transform within us but also peace that will make us transform this beautiful earth you gave us peace that will make us value what matters most and that is the life you gave us in all its forms lord hope hope we seek from you this hope we ask lord that it be also transforming let us hope that let us have hope that makes us create a better future. Hope that makes us stewards of a better world. Hope that builds and nurtures within us a love for nature and humanity. We realize that everything starts, flows, and ends through you. And so we leave this meeting in your holy and most capable hand, asking you to direct and guide us. This we ask through Jesus Christ, your son, who lives with you, with the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Now, our volunteers will uh, sing our opening song, which is Twinge Nyumbani. This means, let us enter the house of the Lord.
I invite Father Benedict Ayudi to make some introductory remarks. Father Benedict is the program manager at GCCM Africa. Thank you, thank you very much. Dear friends, brothers and sisters, good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are following this prayer service from. We are very delighted indeed and blessed to have you join the Global Prayer Service organized by the Global Catholic Climate Movement, GCCM Africa. Our theme for this prayer service is transforming peace. Remembering that on this particular day, 7th August 1998, there were the simultaneous coordinated US embassy bombings in three East African cities, thus Nairobi, Kenya, Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, and Kampala, Uganda. Hundreds of people died and many others injured in an attack that was blamed on the Al-Qaeda terror group. Moreover, as you may know, yesterday the world com commemorated the 75th anniversary of the atomic bomb attack in Hiroshima, Japan. What do these events signify for us as people who care for our common home? As you know, the human, social, economic, and environmental impact of war and conflict are enormous and devastating on our common home. You can imagine the destruction of the ecosystem in Hiroshima and Nagasaki with the dropping of the nuclear bomb, nothing survived, not even a cockroach. Today, we pray for peace and justice and for the victims of war and conflict in Africa and all over the world. We also pray for peaceful coexistence of all creatures. As Pope Francis says in Laudato Si, because all creatures are connected, each must be cherished with love and respect for all of us as living creatures are dependent on one another. Paragraph 42 of Laudato Si. May the Lord grant us peace, justice, and harmony in our families, countries, and all over the world. Laudato Si, God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Father Benedict. Now, let us take a moment to listen to the song of creation.
the moon and the stars who light up the way unto your Okay, I now invite Sister Agatha Ikumete, a Laudati Si animator from Nigeria, to give us testimony on the impacts of oil in Nigeria. Hi, sister. We just need for you to unmute. So is it fine? Okay. Um, I am a Nigerian and I'm from the Niger Delta region of the country. Nigeria has the largest oil and gas reserve in Africa and it is the 11th largest oil producer in the world. And most of our resources exist in the Niger Delta region of the country. The nine oil bearing states in the country are collectively known as the Niger Delta region. Though these states in this region are socially and culturally diverse, we share in common the detrimental consequences of crude oil exploration and gas flaring. From the discovery of the first commercially viable oil in the Niger Delta to the present day, the issue of oil production and its effect on our environment has been the source of constant friction between oil companies and their host communities. Our region has also been rated as one of the most oil spill vulnerable areas in the world. And as of 2008, oil related activities in this region have resulted in the contamination of an estimated 2,000 sites. The main sources of oil spill in our communities are from the corrosion of the oil pipelines sabotage and oil production operations. We heavily depend on our environment for daily living, mostly in the form of fishing and farming. Consequently, oil exploration and exploitation have had far-reaching negative environmental, social, as well as economic impact on our environment. So whenever oil is spilled, it destroys our vegetation, it destroys our mangrove forest, it destroys our food and catch crops alike. It reduces the nutrient value of our soil and induces land fragmentation. Whenever oil is spilled, there is massive extermination of fishes, thereby threatening the economic and social life of our fisher folks, whose livelihood depends on the contaminated waters. Whenever oil is spilled, it poisons our algae, disrupts major food chains, and decreases the yield of edible crustaceans. Whenever oil is spilled in isolated cases, it sets our communities on fire, resulting in internal displacement. Whenever oil is spilled, it causes severe problems for us as we are dependent on our creeks and rivers as the only source of our drinking water. Thus, we suffer various health ailments, including difficulty in breathing, skin infection, kidney problems, and even cancer. The black gold, which has been a source of blessing to Nigeria for decades, is now a weapon for mass destruction, as the once immaculate environment of our Niger Delta has been severely degraded 
with the surface and groundwater heavily contaminated. We now fight against each other over ownership of resources and sharing of empowerment from oil companies and some communities even displaced to make this region habitable for future generations. We have a key role to keep and clean up the Niger Delta. We must therefore speak up as stewards of our environment for it is a sin for human beings to destroy the biological diversity of God's creation. It is a sin to degrade the integrity of the earth by causing changes mm. in its climate. It is a sin to strip the earth of its natural forest or destroy its wetlands. It is a sin for human beings to contaminate the earth's waters, its land, its air, and its life. To commit a crime against the natural world is a sin against ourselves and a sin against God. Ladder to sin number eight. I therefore conclude with the words of Ken Saruwiwa of Blessed Memory, and I quote, that an ecological war is highly lesser, the more so as it is unconventional. It is omnicidal in effect. Human life, flora, fauna, the air fall at its feet. And finally, the land itself dies. Thank you, Agatha, for your uh, testimony. Um, next, we have our procession song before our scripture readings. The song is in a songambele in Jili, which means moving the gospel forward. Our first reading is by Maria Graciela. She is the youngest of three siblings and is currently in the third grade. She's a practicing Catholic and is awaiting to receive her first Holy Communion. A reading taken from the book of James, chapter 2, verses 14 to 18. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? And one of you says to them, Go in peace, for men who try the necessities of the body. What good is it? So also faith of itself, if it does not have works, it is dead. Indeed, someone may say, you have, faith. you have faith and I have works. Demonstrate your faith without works, and I will demonstrate my faith to you for my works. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our second reading will be done by Jonas du Duimana, a Dato C animator from Burundi and the GCCM Burundi chapter leader. Yes, I am using my phone. Allow that to see fourteen. I urgently appear then for a new dialogue about how we are shaping the future of our planet. We need a conversation which includes everyone, science, the environmental challenge we are undergoing and its human load concerning the effects of us all. The worldwide ecological move has already made considerable progress and led to establishment of numerous organizations committed to raising awareness of these challenges. Regrettably, many efforts to seek concrete solutions to the environmental crisis have proved ineffective, not only because of powerful opposition, but also because of general lack of interest, obstructionist attitudes, even on the part of believers, can range from denial of problem or to indifference, non charent resignation, or blind confidence in technical solutions. We require a new and a universal solidarity as the bishops of Southern Africa have stated, everyone is a talent and the involvement are needed to redress the damage caused by human abuse of God's, God's creation. All of us can cooperate as instruments of God for the care of creation, each according to his or her own culture experience, involvement, and the talents. Thank you, Jonas. Now, Mrs. Anne Marika will lead us in a reflection. Anne works at the United Nations offices here in Nairobi. She is an experienced motivational speaker and she leads the daily reflections on Capuchin TV. Welcome to our reflections. God is good all the time. I have based my reflection from the Bible reading, James chapter 2 verse 14 to 18, and paragraph from Laudato C, paragraph from paragraph number 14. And my highlight on the Bible reading is verse 17. In the same way, faith itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. And then from the paragraph from Laudato C, I've taken this highlight and I'll read it. Regrettably, many efforts to seek concrete solutions to the environmental crisis have proved ineffective, not only because of powerful opposition, but also because of a more general lack of interest. 
St. James invites us to prove that we have faith by actions and deeds. We cannot say that we love God when we hate our fellow men and hate the creation that is God's own handiwork. We profess one thing, then do another. If we claim that we love God, then we live in peace with one another and enjoy the beauty of his creation. We preach peace, but make no effort to work on reconciliation. St. James poses this question to us. Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? Mother Earth groans in pain and agony and fights us back. Lack of peace has birthed the many effects that have caused havoc in the world. The problems are big and urgent. We need to act. We see many natural disasters in unprecedented intensity occurring all over the world. Typhoons, hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, landslides, snowstorms, heat waves, and so on. Climate change has found the environmental crisis of our day. Neglecting the environment has led to lack of peace in the world. We all believe and have faith that there is interconnectedness between human beings and all the created beings, but lack of acting in faith and practicing what we proclaim has brought the world to a place of desperation. Peace emanates from our hearts and is reflected by our love for God. We acknowledge that we have brought disaster upon ourselves. Currently, the COVID-19 pandemic has rendered the world hopeless and despondent. Is this as a result of failing to respect the interrelationship between man and other creatures and created things in the world? Environmental challenges have been brought about by lack of peace, where politics, hunger for power, and greed for resources, resulting in conflicts between communities and nations. Ever since they gained independence, several African countries have never known peace. Being well endowed with many natural resources has been a curse and not a blessing to these countries. The resort has been wanton plunder and destruction of their valuable natural resources. In most cases, their citizenry never benefiting from the exploitation of these resources has pushed further into poverty, rendered refugees by internecine was instigated and fueled by the same plunder. Wars and fights happening between members of the same family, between members of the same group, the same religion, religion and even the same country. We see the destruction of natural forests, water towers for communities, and then we wonder why there are so many landslides threatening communities nestled on rows of hills since antiquity, rivers flooding to levels never experienced before, carrying away to the seas all our fertile soils. This is replicated in many other parts of the world. Again, our inaction and general lack of interest has engendered poverty in turn in turn leading to increased crime and evil in our communities. Solving climate change means protecting the planet and the vulnerable people. Many communities are wallowing in poverty as a, as a result of mindless destruction of the environment. The seasons are no longer predictable. The rains fall in the dry season, 
while the severe cold season extends for half a year, the crops wither and dry. There is no water, no harvest. There is no grass in the grazing fields. They no longer have animals to sell at the market. The markets have dwindled and so has the economic well-being of the communities. In Kenya, pastoralist communities residing in the northwest of the country continue to experience conflict, most often over grazing rights or water for their animals and so on. The month of August is a special interest to us as Father had told us with the, with the prayer that he started us with. We remember the terrorist attacks that happened here in Africa, in particular in our own country, Kenya, and neighboring country, Tanzania, on 7th of August, 2001, which resulted in deaths of hundreds and thousands made in both capital cities of these two nations. This was perpetrated by Al-Qaeda, led by Osama bin Laden, who had declared a holy war on the United States, Jews and their allies. But the deaths happened here in Africa. Another example, there are many examples. Another example, the 9-11 terrorist attack in New York, USA, on September 11, 2001 which caused nearly 3,000 deaths. We are aware of many other terrorist attacks that have occurred here in Africa, Middle East, and in other parts of the world. All these have been caused by lack of peace in our hearts, in our families, which is extended to the whole world. Mother Teresa had this to say about such violence and destruction in the world. And I quote, let us not use bombs and guns to overcome the world. Let us use love and compassion. Peace begins with a smile. Smile five times a day at someone you don't really want to smile to. Do it for peace. Let us, let us radiate the peace of God and so light his light and extinguish in the world and in the heart of all men all, all hatred. And, and love for power. Can we really find God in a world where we are busy destroying the environment? In a gentle way, Mahat, Mahatma Gathi had this to say, in a gentle way, you can shake the world. How can we find peace in a world primed for war, full of gluttony in all its forms, destruction, divisiveness, violence. Let us strive to foster peace, starting from our homes, extending to our communities and societies, and eventually to the whole world. In August 28, 1963, Martin Luther had this to say in his famous, I have a dream speech. And I quote, I have a dream that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. We need to think about this. We need to love our brothers and sisters, regardless of their color, race, tribe, regardless of who they are, poor, rich. We need to foster inclusivity in our communities, nurture peace in our countries and between nations. We need to listen to our faith and morals and act. Do we know our purpose in this world? I pose this question to all of us. Do we know our purpose in this world? In the book of Genesis chapter one, 28 to 29, God bestowed upon man the responsibility of stewardship on the, of the earth. Have we lived up to this calling? God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. 
Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with, it, with seed in it. They will be yours for food. Are we lacking food? Are we being good stewards? And Jesus taught us the greatest commandment. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 to 40. And Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. We all know this right from our catechism days. However, we find it so difficult to practice it. For how long are we going to watch with unconcern when our neighbor is suffering? How long? We need to wake up from our stupor and indifference to realize that God is really addressing us about our human condition. We can show God that we love him by acting, by asking for grace to take that faith and move it with an action. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 31 says, he who oppresses the poor shows contempt to their maker. God is our maker. But whoever is kind and, and helps the needy honors God. Before I conclude, we need to find God. I want to, to encourage us that we need to find God and he cannot be found in noise and restlessness. Mother Teresa, St. Mother Teresa had this to quote. God is a friend of silence. See how nature, the trees, the flowers, the grass grows in silence. See the stars, the moon and the sun, how they move in silence. We need, to silent, we need this silence to be able to touch souls. Please to choose the way of peace. In the short term, there may be winners and losers in this war that we all dread, but that never can or never will justify the suffering, pain, and loss of life the weapons do to humanity. The neglect of environment. Psalms 24 verse one says, the earth is the Lord's and all its fullness. You cannot claim that you love God if you cannot take care of that tree that is growing outside your house. If you cannot even talk to that flower that blooms up from your, your home yard. My dear brothers and sisters, let us arise and act. It is not too late. The, environment, the environmental well-being of our world depends on you and me as good Christians, and as perfect stewards, we have been called to, to be, to act, to arise, to touch. Each one of us has the responsibility to care for our environment, and this will lead to peace and harmony in, the, in our world. Anybody can be an environmental steward by being aware and knowledgeable of the world around them and making sure that we do as little as we can and not destroy the environment. Speak for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Depend, defend the rights of the poor and needy. God invites us to care in a special way for those who are, not, are most in need. Action is required. During this month, let us meditate upon asking God to shower us with his graces that we may be able to increase our faith and act. God is good all the time and all the time he is good. Thank you, Anne, for that powerful reflection. Now, let us take two minutes to type in the chat box a personal reflection from today's theme of transforming peace.
Now we will have the petitions of the faithful. Our intercessory prayers come from five different countries. Where possible, you will hear the prayers in their native languages. Um, this, in, on the screen, you will have the English translations of those, of those petitions. The response will be, Creator God, hear our prayer. Our first petition is from Uganda and it is for the proposed East African crude oil pipeline, which will not only cause unforetold environmental damage, but will also displace hundreds of people. Go ahead. Let us pray. I'll pray in Luganda. I'm Kama Katonda Wensiona. Watonda Omuntu. Notonda Nensiona. Nevidim. Erabiona. No Labanga Virunji. Jiribet sa Abobona. Ababonya Bonezewa. Oloko Fako Fekana Feka. Na dalaba na bo abasiridwa mumani wabuavo, abalu moengela, na wako sebwa muktiwa la obutonde bo na bulunji bo yensi. Wani ni dabo bebirete de oktaya ya ni damu insumo, na dalaba abataya ya na kwa pipeline ezizimbi wa mu Uganda, Tanzania, Nigeria. Nevi tu ndu evira la monsi yona. Tumuli sefe na wuli jo. Tujumbile mpise nunji. Eyo kula vidira awa ntubo. Wamu nevi tu ndu evira la monsi yona. Ata tutukirize no vuna njizwa. Bawatu kwa siwa. Mkutonde wa kwa fe. Creator God, hear our prayers. Our second intercession is for the conflict between Egypt and Ethiopia over the construction of the Grand Renaissance Dam. Hello? Yes, please go ahead. Okay. Uh, with a minute, I will open the prayer. Um, أصلي من أجل نعمة مشتركة أعطيت لي ولكل مصري أن تكون سبب لتمجيد الله النيل لا يعطي فقط الماء لمصر هو الحياة كما ذكر في التاريخ المؤرخ اليوناني هيرودوت 
خمس قرون قبل الميلاد مصر هبة النيل أصلي أن لا يكون النيل مصدر للصراعات في كل صلوات التقصية للقداس الإلهي في مصر دائما نطلب من أجل مياه النيل أصلي أن نعي أهمية المياه في حياتنا اليومية وأن نتعامل بحرص مع هذه الهدية الرائعة الممنوحة لنا من الله وأن نستطيع أن نشاركها مع أخواتنا في أفريقيا أصلي أن يكون نهر النيل مجرى يوحد الشعوب التي يمر من خلالها لكي نستطيع أن نحيا حياة مشاركة أفضل ونبني مجتمعات أفضل أمين Creator God, hear our prayers. Amen. Our third intercession is from Lesotho, and it is for the preservation of our wildlife. Do we have a, a prayer person from Lesotho? Thank you very much for the opportunity. I'll read the prayer in Sesotho. This is the, the local language. Thank you. Morena Mutimo, Monga Rona, Libiso Lahao, Little Haka can live fast in Lothle. Haki Bona Mahudimo. Ahao, Musebezi, Wadi Atlasa Hao. Gibu Hawe, Dilidina Lady. Se Udi Bay Lem Madulong Asona. Ebe Mutu in a ling, Ho Kam Hopalang. Di Pa Follow, Di Nonyana, Bo Shwa, Di Ruhu Bele, Di Me La Lady Fate. Kika Rulo Yam Mopawa Hao. Fiao Trotisa. Ka ho hlophisa buiyane ba tlhole ho ya hao le ho bea tsohle madulong a tsona ka bogabane e morena ke o tlotlisa ka diphofolo tsohle ka mefuta yohle ya tsona le ka mo o dibeileng tsohle ka mo dilukelang ka teng ke thuse ho hlonepha lo sireletsa botle bona ba tlholeho dinonyana o di hlotse di gethile ka botle le mefuta ya tsona di eketsa botle le fatsing ka melodi le mebala ya tsona bo hlwa di kokonyana di rugubele o di entse di gahle ha holo ke thuse o tlusisa le wananela boleng le o gethea ha tsona ke le bo ha morena di bupua tsohle tsa hao di ri fa thabo ha re di bona o khabisitse mmagona le fatshe ka di mela le di fate tsa mefuta yohle se o ile le hae go di nonyana le di kokonyana di sireletsa mobu le tsa tsin le tlabolang ha bohloko le mea e fokang ka matla di mela le di fatetsa hao di re hlahisetsa dijo tse re fepang ke thusa ho sireletsa le ho phidisana le tlholeho yohle ka paballe ho molemong wa meleko yohle modimo ya matla ohle ke wena ya bopileng dintho tsohle ka botle bo hlollang e o motla mopa wa hao ke thuse o ananela tlholeho yo hle ka legato mme re sireletse tlotlisonya le bitso la hao le halalelang mopa wa hao amen creator god hear our prayers our fourth intercession is from nigeria and we will pray for global peace
pray for peace and unity in the whole world. That the Almighty God may grant us peace, unity, and love among us, as he prayed to his Father, that they may be one, become God of the universe, and wash away this pandemic called coronavirus, ravaging the whole world so that the world may continue in their different ways of exchanging their relationship with one another, free coronavirus. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Creator God, hear our prayer. Our final intercession is from South Africa, and it is for those living in extreme poverty. I will be praying in Isikosa. Nkosi onofelfe kulusise ukubona abwantu abangama hlwenge beze ninqa didi nketa rokwa filiso noku inkeleni sike kwezi chiyebe isekazikyo ukuba ifanga linyani Yesu, Nyana, Kakito, Sia, Kutadaza, Ukuba, Uvizizelele, Isazela, Zehu, Zetu, Sefile, Nkede Dlele, Isaki B. Sayao, Nye, Nakale Lao, Ndalo, Nabaye, Abantu, Isifile, Fila, Nabo. Amen. Creator God, hear our prayers. I now invite Prince Papa, Program Coordinator of GCCM Africa, to give us the call to action. Thank you so much. Uh, MC for the day, Marianne Oweti. We are very grateful uh, for your Marine support. Papa. And um, um, before we come to the close of this uh, prayer service, uh, we have a few announcements to make uh, with our audience. Um, we have a season of creation coming up uh, starting uh, September. And uh, we really encourage um, Christians all over the world uh, to take this moment, this season, um, in caring for creation and calling for um, a unified world where we live uh, coherently with our planet. Um, in Africa, we have a serious event planned. And uh, one is that on 10th, on, on, on 10th of uh, September, we are having a webinar, and this webinar is going to focus on the number of uh, um, planned fossil fuel investment in this continent. As science says, and uh, as Pope Francis says uh, in Laudato Si, that we have to re-examine our reliance on fossil fuels, and we will be focusing on the oil project yep. in Uganda and right. also Nigeria. Also, uh, we are launching a restoration project in Kakamega, Kenya. This is an area which has one of the remnants of the equatorial forest which spread across Africa a long time ago. And on uh, 19th, we have organized a prayer service for the continent of Africa, which will be online. And lastly, we will be in Nairobi, Kenya, uh, blessing animals on the 26th of September. If you are in Nairobi, bring your cats, bring your dogs, bring your donkeys. We will have a priest who will bless them all. And uh, lastly, uh, we would like to um, uh, note that uh, we are having close collaboration with our partners. We thank you so much partners for supporting us 
all across the globe and uh, also sharing with us your events that you have. And lastly, we would like to announce that uh, in September, we won't have the usual monthly prayer service on the first Friday of the month. But instead, on September 1st, we will be having a global service to kick off the season of creation. So mark your calendar that September 1st is another big event. Uh, we are starting and blessing the season of creation. And um, I thank you so much for being with us till the end. And uh, I would like to um, invite um, Deacon Brother Stephen Makagutu to take uh, two minutes uh, with a closing prayer and bless us. Brother Stephen Makagutu is one of our Laudato Si animators and a volunteer with the Global Catholic Climate Movement. Brother Makagutu. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We thank you, God, for being with us. As we pray for peace, may you transform us to be better people in the society, living for the creation. We ask all this through Christ our Lord, Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And the blessing of the mighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. We will now have a closing song by our volunteers here at um, in Nairobi. And this will close our prayer service. Thank you so much. Uh, that marks the end of our uh, prayer today. Uh, you may leave at will as you listen to this music. Uh, may God be with you all.
Whoa, thank you guys. Let's clap for us all. Tremblement de terre. Écoute les pleurs des pauvres, les pleurs de la terre. Au secours, sauvez les pour la gloire du Seigneur. De nuevo, mi llamado urgente. Falling apart is on no fire. Climate change is a modern day spiritual challenge. Grazie Santo Padre Papa Francesco per laudato si. Laudato si, celebration. Laudato si, oh mi signore. Laudato si, celebration. Laudato si, oh mi signore. Laudato si, generation. Thank you. 